Hello guys, this is Carla, and I'm back with a review for episode 10 of season 3 of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is the mid-season finale for season 3, and it's titled Maveth, which is the, um, you know, Hebrew rune thingy that it's been mentioned before that means death. Um, death by punishment or something like that. Um, like I said, this is the mid-season finale, and honestly... I was a little underwhelmed. I mean, I liked the episode. I, I actually did like it. It's just I was expecting something more explosive from a mid-season finale. But now that I've watched it, I kind of find myself going, well, I liked the previous episode so much better. Or the previous episode to that so much better. Or, like, going back, there's there's been so much payoff in this um, season of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's like, bam after bam after bam. And this one felt a little tame in comparison. But I did like it, um, for the most part. Uh, I thought the best part of it was the, uh, the best part of it was the off-planet stuff. Um, the, the, um, Ward and Coulson and Fitz and Will in the other planet. I thought that was kind of the best part of it. I loved seeing, um, Fitz and Will interact. Which, of course, then we find out that it's not really Will, but he was acting like Will. So, in my head, that's kind of what... A reunion between Will and Fitz would have been so I dig it I, I like the fact that they you know I have this thing because I'm, I'm a big shipper of pairings of everything so um, I know a lot of people when they ship a pairing they don't like love triangles and okay they, they can be a bit contrived and they're a bit overused and a lot of times they're just not used right at <laughs> a toilet <laughs> but i think because i think three is a is a great number for writing i think friendship trios are great i think enemy trios are great and i think love triangles can be great i like seeing the dynamics between three people and i'm a big proponent that i love triangles were both of you know the extra central um, corners of the triangle are actually great people, you know, because it's it, it would be too easy if one of them is great and the other one's a douchebag, okay? It's, yeah, um, that would be kind of an easy choice, right? And I would feel terrible for the person in the middle if they actually choose the douchebag because they're that big of an idiot, you know? Because it should be obvious who you should pick. But I love it when triangles have to, two, like one person is torn between two different people who are just equally as great. And that's why I wanted to see Fitz and Will interact. Because from all that we know of Will, he was great. He was an amazing guy. And Fitz, I mean, we've been with Fitz since season one. We know how great he is. He's a hero as well. Um, so I was very interesting, interested to see them interact. Because um, I think... They're not the type, fans love pitting, you know, pitting um, suitors between, against each other. Um, it's like, it's always going to be Team Edward, Team Jacob, or it has to be like Team Peter, Team Gail. It, there, it, I love it when there's no teams, when both choices are equally great, and when both choices don't actually hate each other. Because they're both great people, and they shouldn't just hate each other over a girl, you know, so... Just like girls shouldn't hate each other over a boy. Um, so I liked, I wanted to see that interaction between the two of them. And I was very glad that they didn't hate each other. Like to, up to a point they kind of understood each other. Even if they don't necessarily, they didn't necessarily become best friends. It was like a date. They, they spent like a few hours there. So of course they couldn't just like become best friends or anything. But I liked that they understood each other. And so I liked that, ba that part. I liked... The idea that Fitz wasn't just, you know, given in to Ward, which, honestly, he should have. Because, technically speaking, helping Ward was helping Fitz as well, in a way. Um, at least at the beginning of the episode, because he had to get to Will, right? So, you know, he had to... Ward kind of gave him an excuse to get to Will, because then Will could guide them and whatever. But, um, but I like that he didn't... I mean, yeah, going for his gun was kind of stupid because 
yeah, he's a trained killer and you're fit. So not the smartest move, but I like the the feeling behind it. I like the idea that he that just because Ward pushed him into working for him and is threatening to kill Gemma or do something unspeakable to her um, on the other side of the portal, that doesn't mean that Fitz has to just go with it, you know, because it should be stated really clearly, and he, he did state really clearly that he wasn't planning on um, just letting Ward do his thing. Because he might love Gemma, but at the same time, you know, it's not. he wasn't about to let this creature just go through the portal, right? Um, I mean, he was going to try his best, he just didn't know what was coming. Um, then there was, you know, this whole Ward thing. I, I think this, is, this has been the best season for Ward, and I like Ward a lot better as a bad guy than I did as a good guy, especially in this season, because I, I think he's been able to show a bit more of what makes him such a great bad guy. At the same time, you know I've had problems with the whole Hydra thing. Um, I've had uh, issues with him just trying to be a Hydra head when he knows it's not a good fit. And then last episode when Malik sent him through the portal, I, it could have been a bit like he was giving up too easily. But I like that because last time I said, yeah, he, he recognized that Malik was manipulating him. But at the same time, he was the right person for the job. And I think I like that they kind of continued that train of thought in this one. It's like, yeah, Ward sort of realized there was something more for him than just being a Hydra head or a subordinate of Malik's or whatever. There's something else for him. And I think he was actually... It felt like he was actually looking for this creature out of his own curiosity, in a way. It's like, I could double-cross Malik if I get to this creature first. I thought, I mean, he didn't say it, but that's the feeling I got. And just the whole conversation with Coulson about him, you know, witnessing greater things and whatever, and all the serenity that it brought him. It's a little, I mean, he put in a little BS, but in the end, he... It's that he saw something greater than Hydra. He he was looking for something bigger than Hydra, and I think that's that's better. Like looking for this creature and harnessing it for his own power rather than for Malik or for Hydra. I think it's a better idea in Ward in Ward's mind. You know, it's a better idea than actually killing Malik and taking over Hydra. He doesn't need Hydra. He can be just as bad and get just as much vengeance without Hydra than with them. So I like that. I didn't, I mean, I like Coulson. Coulson had some of the best lines in this episode. I mean, he can, like he wakes up on the other planet and he's like, I'll be damned, I'm on Tatooine. I laugh so hard. And I love that they can make references like this right now because both Star Wars and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. belong to AEC, which belongs to Disney. So, um... I love that they can make references like that because, let's face it, let's face it, I mean, Coulson's one of the biggest geeks there's out there, like, as a person and as a character, he's one of the biggest geeks, so of course he would love Star Wars, and of course that would be the first thing that crosses through his mind when he sees, like, two moons. Um, of course, Catherine was two sons, but, um, <clears throat> okay. Um, <laughs> that thing... I just, I really love that line. And Coulson, I thought he wasn't going to have any good lines in this episode because he was so hell-bent on, you know, killing war and revenge and whatever. So I thought it would be, like, very, you know, kept to focus in this one. Not much talking on his part, just go in and kill. And then he didn't. That was one of the things that kind of disappointed me a bit. It's like, Coulson, you jump through a portal to kill Ward. And then you find Ward. And then you capture him and bring him along? Like, why didn't he just put the entire round of bullets through him right at that point? What was the th I mean, okay, I, I get it that sometimes villains are like, yeah, no, I will take you around with me so you can see everybody you love suffer, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, Coulson didn't have that incentive, and he's a good guy anyway, so why? What was the reason? I mean, I get the whole thing where, you know, you have to track fits or whatever. He found him pretty easily, pretty easily without Ward. You know, I mean, Ward wasn't really doing much of anything. 
so I it was kind of delaying the drama you know it's like you know in the end he's gonna kill Ward because he's going to that's I mean I don't have to like it but he was going to kill Ward so why not do it straight away you could have saved so much trouble later on and it's one of those things where you know the writers kind of need to stretch it out so it lasts through the whole episode and it gets to certain points but we as an audience can totally see that they're just stretching it you know it could have been so much easier before um another thing that's kind of like that is the hand i mean i like the scene when he kills ward like i I like that he didn't put a bullet in him i like that he killed him by crushing him that was i mean the sound oh was gave me chills um but at the same time he just gets up and drops his hand why is it like oh i killed one person with this so i can't kill anybody ever again with my hand or is it, is it like one of those oscar dresses things where you can only wear it once and then never again i mean why and i get that the writers think oh we'll give him a cooler hand now i love that that's great but give him a good reason for you know losing the last one i mean they could have had the thing eat it or something <laughs> they could have had that giant you know water worm that Gemma had to fight suddenly eat Coulson's hand that would have worked perfectly but no he just left it why do you know how much money that costs because I don't think you know bionic hands are cheap dude it's like really so certain things like that just didn't make me all that happy although I did like the result I like I love the twist with Will I mean, I guess most of the time, I don't know. I mean, before I started kind of getting the feeling that Will might be evil, I was hoping he wouldn't be evil. So the writers kind of gave me what I wanted, but not really. (laughs) Because Will turned out to be evil, but at the same time, it turned out not to be Will. So I'm satisfied with that. I really like the twist. Um, And it wasn't obvious. Like, okay... People maybe thought about it before, um, before um, the episode, but during the episode, it really did feel feel like Will, right? So I don't think it was it was obvious. I thought it was very good, and I thought the twist at the end were, you know, it, that it, it the creature kind of jumps from Will's dead body to Ward's. Um, that was interesting um, because obviously. <laughs> You think you killed Ward, right? Then it turns out that no, you didn't. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has become the walking dead all of a sudden, and Ward is back, and he's an intergalactic evil creature that can't just possess people's bodies. Um, So I thought that was neat. Um, I'm not into zombies, so I hope Ward is a bit more than a zombie. (laughs) You know, I hope that he has other powers, kind of, that... Make him make him stand out from um, your usual zombie. Although he did look zombie in the last scene, so that I mean I like the twist. I like that he's still around. At the same time, I'm like, eh, zombie, really? <laughs> Do we need this? Um, but I'll take it because I think there's gonna be more to this war than just zombies. And what I like about this is that also this creature, which um, I've heard people online saying it's the hive, um, which Honestly, I don't know much about or don't remember much about. I know I've heard it, but I don't remember much about what the hive does. But what I liked about the way they set it up here is that not only is he in Ward right now, but he's probably, you know, probably going to, like, because Ward's body is still going to, you know, die, right, eventually. Because even Will's body was, like, all damaged and shit. Um, so, um... I like the idea that he might possess other people and then we get to the point where it's like you can't trust anybody because anybody can be the hive. Um, so I hope they get to that point. Sadly, if they get to that point, it means that Brett Dalton isn't going to be around forever. Which, okay, I didn't necessarily think that Ward was going to be around forever because I don't think he's necessarily big bad, a big bad type of villain. He's a great side villain again and he's been doing he's been killing it this season no point intended um but 
it does mean that he kind of has an end date specified at some point because obviously the creature is not going to be around forever um so i don't know maybe end of the season i don't know i don't know what they're gonna do but i just hope that they don't like redken it and and all of a sudden ward is alive again please don't do that don't just it happens in the comics but please don't um speaking of people who i didn't think were coming back and on the other side of the portal we have andrew who is still around still psycho and still lash i thought it was interesting Gemma's dilemma hey that rhymed um Gemma's dilemma of uh do i release him to save myself and then face the consequences of what he does later because obviously he wasn't going to stay locked up of his own volition right so um i thought that was interesting i think she did the right thing i mean she's not a fighter she i think she did a lot just by kind of getting herself um free from her restraints and avoiding the shield people as often as possible as she could but she couldn't get out of there by herself so i i think it's fine that she released him I do think he's going to have. She's going to have to live with the consequences of all the people that she killed. Um, she didn't kill them, but Lash killed them because she let him go. So, in that scene, man, that scene when May goes to the cages to find it to see if Lash is still there, and she finds like body parts thrown on the floor and blood all over. That was insane, man. That was like straight out of the horror movie. I I kind of love that, and I. I do hope that they have Gemma kind of feel bad about that because, eh, I, I mean, it was okay that she did it, but at the same time, she has to live with the consequences. Um, and I guess now Lash is back. I, I thought they would be done with Lash by the end of the season because everything was moving so fast, but I guess not. I guess he's going to be around for a while. I Like Ward, I don't think Lash is going to, you know, la- last for indefinite seasons or anything I think he'll probably be out either killed or somehow healed of his psychosis or something by the end of the season because I don't think they can stretch it out as much and either way shield doesn't they usually don't stretch big bats until you know later on in the season they, they usually don't last that long until like next season or anything. So I think both of them, both uh, Lash and Ward are gonna kick the bucket (laughs) eventually before the end of the season, if not at the end. Um, As far as the others go, I mean, they had a little bit of of good moments. I think everybody looked pretty good in this episode. I liked that Joey and Lincoln actually got to do, like be part of the actual team. I love Joey, okay? Because you have Lincoln on the one hand, who's like very confident and very cocky and very like, yeah, I totally deserve to be here because I have to fight for my people or whatever. Um, and he, he totally thinks he deserves to be there. While Joe is kind of really uncertain. He's like, wait, how do we do this again? Like, what, what is the point? Like, and he is so cute because, you know, again, I, I said this before, none of them are trained. And just because Lincoln thinks that he can handle everything, it doesn't mean that everybody thinks that way. And I, I love that they're giving Joey that kind of, um, just that hesitance um, about being able to do this. He didn't want to be a fighter. He just wanted to be a, p- a person, you know? You know, live his life, have his job, love his family. That's all he wanted to do. And then he got stuck in this mess. And now he's part of the script called the secret warriors and now he's fighting against you know deadly things and deadly people just because he has to because he has these powers and he has to do something with them so it's very interesting to see his point of view and it was also really cute because he's funny (laughs) it's funny how he was like all awkward and stuff and he did get that great moment with the bullets which admittedly i saw coming like as soon as they pointed a gun at daisy i was like yeah, he's gonna melt the bullets. I know it. Um, the special effects were great. Like the bullets look really weird, but I like the idea of the fact that he can't melt bullets before even touching them. You know that that was really interesting and good use of their powers. I'd never really seen that happen before. Um, 
Lincoln, on the other hand, I liked the fact that he's he was kind of the one who was being very pragmatic in this time around, which after seeing his Leroy Jenkins moment like a few episodes back where he just goes marching straight in to kill to kill Lash, to see him like kind of take a back seat and just be like, we can't let that thing just come here, okay? And he was the only one because granted he doesn't have to care about Coulson, he doesn't have to care about um about Fitz and he, he doesn't really know them enough to want them to come back that badly. But I like that someone had, you know, the opposite point because Mac didn't have it this time around. Mac, you know, he was in that whole leave no man behind mentality. So he wasn't about to negotiate leaving Coulson and Fitz behind, right? So somebody had to do it. And it's very interesting that it's Lincoln because I, I think I think it's a good thing. I think he's not necessarily crazy about fighting. He's just... He has very pointed kind of um, ideas of what the right thing to do is and the wrong thing to do is. So that's good. It's good that he had that one moment. It's like, hey, you old Lincoln lovers. See, he can't think. He's not always going off without thinking. So take that. He's awesome. Um, Again, also awesome. Um, One thing I didn't like, I mean, May is always awesome, but I think... At some point, I didn't really like the choreography of this. Like, when ming was kicking people, it didn't really look real. It looked staged. So I thought they could do a better job with the choreography here. Um, a lot of Bobby's fights we never saw. <laughs> we just hurt them. So I was like, eh, really? I mean, it's always so great to see this kick-ass woman, you know, actually kicking ass. But then this time around, we didn't see it. And even Daisy kind of took a backseat to everything i mean she had that one moment with mac when she's like no i'm not leaving you behind because you're my partner and that was great that was adorable i mean that was a fantastic scene i loved that mac was just like no everybody go you know um, if somebody has to stay behind while you destroy this thing it's gonna be me and that's great because mac has been doing really great this season he's really grown on me before he just he was just kind of there but I didn't really see a personality in him all that much, but I like him now. And I like that he took a stand, and I like that Daisy kind of stayed with him, with him. but at the same time, there was no payoff to that scene. I, like, I think it would have been more significant if somebody had actually died in there. Um, but no, in the end, you kind of knew that they were go- all going to get away fine, and there were, they were all going to come back fine, even Coulson and, and Fitz. So it was, I mean, they stretched it out and they went with the mystery and like, yeah, May exploded the uh, the castle and it seemed like they were would all die, but then you see the capsule and you know that everybody's all right. So I think as the scene itself, that sacrifice kind of, it was a great scene and just didn't have any payoff. Like the payoff was just missing for me. So it didn't have as much of an impact as it would have wanted. You know, it's like setting up a joke and then not delivering with it in a way. So, eh, that's, I mean, I don't blame the actors. Again, Mac was terrific. Daisy, that was her moment in the whole episode. Um, but it just didn't deliver in the end because nobody died. That's why, it, it's, that's why I kind of said that I was a little disappointed with the episode. It's just because there was no, it wasn't really, there was no punch to it other than the word thing. Um, and then one last thing I have to say is... Um, about Fitz and Gemma, which is, generally speaking, it's always the last thing I bring up in this in these episodes because it's kind of my favorite ship. Um, I thought it was great that Fitz was doing all this for Gemma. You know, I've talked about this ad nauseum um, in previous episodes, but in the end, then when Gemma comes, when, when Fitz comes back, and and they they get on the capsule and they come back, and then Fitz just kind of. Oh no, Gemma runs to the capsule and looks through the window. And I thought initially that she was looking for, you know, either Fitz or Will. Either of them. Um, then Fitz comes around the corner and just kind of looks at her. And she turns, looks at him. And I'm just sitting there like, come on, jump at him. Hug him. Throw yourself into his arms. You know, he, he just freaking went to save your other boyfriend in that other planet. 
I think he deserves a hug. It took him, it took him for freaking ever, okay? It, I, I'm almost offended. Because she, I mean, okay, I know she had that one moment when she's, um, she was probably just thinking, well, Will isn't here, Will is dead, right? Um, but at the same time, I thought it was a really crappy thing to do. Because, I mean, come on, Fitz. Okay, he didn't give his life for Gemma or anything, but he could have. I mean, none of these things, he, he did them knowing he might not survive. So, and I, I am one of those persons who happen to think that relief is kind of the fastest, um, the fastest emotion. It's like whenever something happens, relief is the first thing that fills you. So she should have felt that just seeing fits. And I'm almost angry that she didn't. Um, it seriously it took forever, dude. Just jump at his arms. What's so? Why are you thinking that much? I mean, you can grieve Will later, sure, but it's like it, it felt weird that one scene. So I hope they they do something better with her in the next episode because I thought it was a bit ungrateful that she didn't like it took her forever to actually hug Fitz. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, the episode, I, I liked it. I like where they're going. I like the possibilities this, this shows for the second half of the season. I think that's great. It wasn't a perfect episode, though. There were things that I didn't like. Um, and it didn't have as much emotional impact as I was hoping for from the previous episodes. Like, if they had ended this season on the previous episode in Closure... I thought that would have been a perfect season finale, but this this one wasn't it wasn't that much of a punch, um, so I was hoping to see more from that. But I'm intrigued. I mean, I like the idea of Hyde Ward. I like the idea of Lash being out there. Like, can you imagine if the Hive actually possesses Lash? Like, that would be freaking unstoppable. Okay, um, I like that idea of this ancient civilization. I hope they explore that. I mean, I don't think they're going back to the planet again, but I hope Fitz kind of explores that. So that's interesting. Um, and just the whole Secret Warriors thing, I, I hope we get to see more from Joey. I don't know, it, it opens up a lot of interesting possibilities that I really like, but it could have been a better episode, I think. Um, and that's about it for now, because I've been speaking for almost half an hour, so... Um, that's about it for my review. If you guys want to see more reviews for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., be sure to visit our website, thegeekypub.com. We have reviews for this episode, for, I'm sorry, for this season, for the previous season. We have a ton of stuff in there. Also, reviews for other shows, books, movies, games. We have a ton of stuff over at the website, so be sure to visit and check it out. In the meantime, if you want to be um, notified when we upload, as soon as we upload uh, a new review, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the link should be down below this frame. Um, subscribe because our reviews always go up first on YouTube, um, even before they hit the website, so that's the fastest way to know. And like, as soon as we upload something, you'll be notified. Um, so be sure to do that, and I will see you guys in my next review, so bye!